hi it's Jay here again and welcome to another video so we're going to continue on with the opponent AI we need to create some more variables now you can put these where you want but I'm going to put mine here and the first ones can be of type private int decide forward movement let's close that line off into the comments we're going to say defines naming convention for when deciding the forward movement let's just copy that line and we'll change it to backwards and we'll just change the comment as well and we need to create three other variables so the first two again can be of type private they can be of type int we'll say underscore minimum we'll just give this a name of minimum decide value we'll say defines naming convention for the minimum decision value again we'll just copy and paste that line in we'll change it from minimum to maximum now the next one is going to be of type public and the reason for these variables the reason why this one's going to be public is it will allow us to set a field which will be based on a random number that will dictate what the enemy is more likely to do is it more likely to jump is it more likely to walk towards the player now the reason I'm doing this is so you can have some variation in your AI without keep duplicating scripts so if you want to a character that doesn't jump around as much but maybe stronger you can do that of course you can have a more mobile character who can jump around very acrobatic but uh, maybe it's weaker you can do that so that's why we're making this public so we can adjust it in the inspector on all our enemy models and we don't have to duplicate scripts now we need to give this a name so let's say tipping point decide value let's close that line off um i don't really like that naming convention much but i just can't think of what else to call it at the moment so we'll go with that we'll, we'll probably come back and change that defines naming convention for the let's say decide value variable we'll just create a line break let's come to the void start in fact let's group some of this together so all these where we get components we'll keep them all together in a block let's keep the transform everything to do with transform and direction and vectors together so we'll do that we can put this anywhere let's let's put it here so minimum side value 
equals one. Let's close that line off. We'll just copy and paste that in to the comments. Minimum side value equals one on start up. Shouldn't have used capital there, but we'll just change that. Let's copy the line. And we'll change that to maximum. We'll give that value of 10. And obviously, once we've actually finished this part of the code, you may want to have a wider or a smaller range, and that's absolutely fine. So excuse me and um, please experiment and uh, decide what works well for you so with that in place let's come down to attack the player i actually don't like that it should be more like advance on the player um yeah i'm going to change that advance on the player so we'll just quickly check Because obviously we're going to probably use the attack when we actually decide in what we want the opponent to do, whether it wants whether the opponent wants to kick or punch the player. So that should really be the attack one. So let's change this so it's correct. Let's paste it in there. So let's have a look. So <laughs> and just go through anywhere there's a red error, just change that. Okay, that's a little bit more tidy, so let's come here, advance on the player, we're going to say underscore the decide forward movement is going to equal a random dot range brackets open and close, close the line off inside the brackets one comma ten which is our min and max value. And we'll put this into the comments set, decide. Yeah, we'll put it in all movement to a random number. Between minimum and maximum so let's have a look here we'll need to say if open and close brackets let's open and close again inside the first set of brackets we're going to say decide and we want decide forward movement is greater than or equals to and we want the minimum decide value let's get that into the com in fact let's enter We'll do this, we'll put and, because we'll need an and. 
Now we'll come back and put the comments in. That should make things easier. So if decide forward movement is greater than or equal to minimum decide value and now we can come to this line below where we have the double and underscore decide forward movement is less than or equal to the tipping point decide value close brackets close that line off and let's get into the comments i'll put and in capitals if decide forward movement it's less than tipping point is, should be less than or equal to tipping point value and let's have a look now so we'll need to get the backwards movement in place now so let's just copy that we'll just paste all that in and we'll just change the variable so decide backwards movement let's just copy that now and now it needs to be the maximum decide value and let's go through this so we need to change that to less than or equal to if backward movement is less than or equal to maximum decide value and we'll also need to change this line with the random range in from forward to backwards Actually, what am I doing? You don't need that in. Sorry, that's just habit. Of, uh, <laughs> I often do that. Um, you might not see it on camera, but when I'm coding when at home, when it's not part of these lessons, I, I often put a semicolon in and then have to delete it because it's just... Uh, just a habit i'm afraid i've done it that many times so let's go through and check this if decide and that should be backwards movement as well so decide backwards movement equals a random range between one and ten which is still correct if decide Backwards movement is less than or equal to the maximum decide value and we'll check the comments. If, so let's have a look and should I say decide backwards movement is, and we just need a greater than this time. Remember we're using an equals of the, or so. And we need to change the comment. So backwards movement is greater than, and that's all we need. Greater than tipping point value. So we've got both these in, we've got attack the player for 
the minimum and maximum so we can actually just copy the if block again from attack the player we're going to paste it in to <clears throat> excuse me to the retrieve from player just below where we generate a random range and we can just change this out now to backwards movement backwards movement and now everything else can remain the same so we can just change the comments and now we'll copy this line from retreat from player so this if block where we say is less than or equal to the maximum and we'll paste that in to advance on player we'll change that to forward movement and now we can just copy and paste forward into the comment there so let's save this off i think we'll leave it here for this lesson as you can probably tell i'm sounding a little bit rough but um never mind still got the lesson done but uh, my voice uh, i can feel it's starting to uh, go at the minute so i think this is a good time to end as always i hope you enjoyed this lesson i hope to see you next time and until then as always bye for now